Okay, gravity isn't taking over yet. And then, oh, you can't drive forward, so assume we drive forward. <laughs> that counts. That counts. That's a score. So welcome to uh, our third day of RA3D. Uh, so we've pretty much finished our mechanical design of our robot and finished manufacturing. We've got our arm mounted um, <laughs> on our chain drive with our with our extendo arm out and our gripper on the end for our uh, implements. Um, right now we're starting to get wires ran out, so it's kind of a mess. Um, but we've got our chain drive set up um, with a Neo on a hundred to one reduction. Um, and then that on the chain drive is another two to one reduction. So all in all, we have a 200 to one uh, gear reduction uh, through this arm. And then we get position control off the uh, built-in encoder off the Neo. Um, we're planning on in implementing a, pit or a PID loop to control our angle. Um, assuming we have time yet, um, we're still working on kind of finishing wiring everything, getting all that situated, and then we'll uh, start working on that and we'll get an update out to you. Um, otherwise, arm is mounted, and we have soft and hard, or we have hard stops um, for our limits, and then we're going to mount uh, limit switches um, for uh, lower end upper limit on our uh, pivot for our arm. Um, this is going to prevent us from driving our taking our motor and driving it into the bar and uh, self destructing ourselves, basically. So, um, otherwise, the extendo arm or the extension arm has pretty much stayed the same, um, and then the gripper, uh, Calvin will talk about. So as far as the gripper goes, um, we have been getting a lot of questions on both the live stream and in comments on some of the uploads and videos that we've done um, with regards to um, why we're not using suction this year or why they've been seeing a lot of suction being used in the past or things of that nature. Um, from experience on the team here, I think we did the math the other day and there's over 40 years of experience between all the members on our team um, in FIRST Robotics prior to doing RI3D here. And in our experience, there just hasn't been a lot of um, positives to using the suction, be it either just downsides due to the air consumption or just the complexity of the systems by comparison. Um, like if you're gonna use like say a Venturi style suction system, so something that you use air to run through a Venturi to generate your vacuum, uh, you just have really high air consumption. So you need a lot of air tanks and for the rookie teams or the new teams that may be utilizing some of these designs, they might not have access to that large number of air tanks. I think I did the math and just to run one suction cup with the Venturi style for 10 seconds during a match, you need something like 10 of the clippered air tanks to run it at its full volume, full vacuum. The other option is to go with a electric vacuum pump the downside of those is they generate vacuum quite slowly by comparison. So you actually have to interface with the cube, for example, and hold the suction cup there for, I want to say somewhere in the ballpark of five to seven seconds before you actually generate enough vacuum to be able to lift the cube up, even as light as it is. That's discounting the cone. The cone weighs three to five times as much as the cube itself, and the interfaces on the cone don't have, you don't have as flat of an area to grab onto. So you're either grabbing on the top and then you have to plug the hole in the center of the cone or you grab on the sides and then you have to deal with the cone only being able to be picked up when it's flat. So what are you gonna do when it's knocked over? Our solution for that is what we have here. So if we pick this back up, we actually have multiple ways to interface here. So we have these compliant wheels that we're actually utilizing to grab our cones and then the gray pneumatic wheels to grab the cube. So if I grab this in here, we don't have air to the system right now, but basically we just squeeze this in and this grabs both the cube and the cone quite effectively. It's not gonna bounce around or fall out. 
beyond that, this also allows us to pick up cones that are laying on their side versus cones. So we can pick up cones that are just on their side, can pick them up upright, you can pick them up like this, doesn't really matter. Anything will work for us. As far as that goes, um, it's just a simpler system overall. There's a lot less air being used. So then another benefit of ours is when we, I was loading the cube into there, you might have noticed that the compliant wheels here do rotate a little bit. So the benefit of that being also in, the, um, in conjunction with the cone being able to be picked up off the ground is when the cone is grabbed, so we grab it somewhere towards the bottom. So when we grab this, this allows the cone to rotate. So actually the cone self writes to allow us to drop the cone back onto the PVC. And I mean, you have to pull pretty hard. That's probably about 10 to 15 pounds of force that I'm pulling down on the cone with on the compliant wheels. So it just gives us a lot more positive affixation on the cone compared to say a suction style um, pickup or a passive like complying intake with six or seven wheels around it that it can still flop out of because you're relying on the shape of the cone to generate your crushing force. And mind you, we're only running 15 per, or 15 PSI working pressure to our uh, lift to avoid damaging the, um, the cube. Um, we deem that's a, that's a pretty fragile game piece and pretty easy to pop, especially if you start working at a, or at a working pressure of 60 PSI. Um, even small pistons like we have here with a half inch bore will generate quite a bit of force very quickly at that. So yeah, that's all the updates we have for you right now. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, otherwise, we are gonna host a Q&A session after our robot reveal tomorrow, uh, which we're very excited to bring to you. Um, it'll be sometime uh, Tuesday, January 10th, uh, tomorrow night at probably around like 6, 6.30 p.m. Um, sometime later in the evening. So um, that'll be live. Um, and we'll just have uh, a bunch of us here to, to answer questions and you can just throw them in a YouTube live chat and we'll, uh, we'll answer them as you come in. So uh, it should be pretty fun and we'll uh, get some uh, actual face-to-face -face time answering your questions. So look forward to that and uh, thank you for watching. Perfect.